Hello everyone and welcome to the Train Sim World April 2024 roadmap. Here we are. I'm joined today by the uh, executive producer of Trains here at Dovetail, the wonderful, the amazing Mr. Matt Peddleston. Mr. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. Pleasure to be here. And it is a pleasure to be here. It is a lovely evening. Uh, as we start, please let us know how the audio sounds as usual, um, as it is on our roadmap streams. Uh, and if you're <laughs> new here, uh, let me talk. Let me talk to you a little bit about um, what we're going to be doing tonight uh, and what you can what you can expect coming up. So uh, this is the April 2024 roadmap. The audio sounds good, which is lovely. Um, we're going to be talking a bit about some development insights, what we've been doing over the past month, uh, and then we're going to be talking about what's coming up in the future. Um, we shared an article today, so if you are interested or if you want to jump ahead of the stream and kind of read in advance before we get into the details, uh, check out the description of the video. There's loads of bits in there, loads of useful things that you can catch up on. So uh, audio is good. Glad to see you all in the chat. Bill, uh, I saw your comment above. You're recovering from a knee op. I hope you're getting better. I know the pains of a, a, a faulty knee. So uh, I hope you recover soon. And I'm glad you're here on the roadmap stream tonight. Um, but right, let's cover up what's happened in the last month or so. Just before we get into the new stuff, uh, we had the release of the London Overground Suffragette line, as well as the release of Rivet Games 5 Circle Line 2. Um, if you are interested in any sales, we do have a couple sales live. There are some week-long deals on Steam platforms. If you're on PlayStation, there are a couple sales going on. And also, if you are on PC platforms, we have a humble bundle. It's a top up your timetable bundle. You know, you can get Train Sim World 4 for less than £4. I mean, uh, you'd think we'd be hiding it, but there's a link in the description <laughs> if you want to get that deal. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, and you can also pick up, uh, I think, a collection of other add-ons as well um, for a really good deal. And it goes to charity sponsoring special effects. So it's all for a good cause, really. Um, other things that's happened in the kind of March to April time was a couple small patches. We had, a, I think we had a patch on April 6th, uh, as well as uh, a set of TSW3 improvements um, that we wanted to ship through to uh, TSW3 players as well. And one last thing, an amazing thing from myself and for us in the community team, uh, we have a new starter in the community team that started very recently. Uh, she's called Harry or Harriet. Uh, and you'll see her around the community kind of getting involved. Uh, she's only recently started. Our onboarding was just last week. Um, but she's really excited. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll see her popping up and maybe you'll see her on a live stream at some point in the future. Um, who knows, on a preview or even on a roadmap at some point. But uh, that's it for the last month uh, and the last couple of weeks of bits. Why don't we talk about the new stuff, the good stuff? And we have a fancy new roadmap graphic here for you on screen right now. So. Let's talk uh, a little bit of our way through this. Um, it, it's kind of split up into different sections and I'll bring up a couple mentions as we go, uh, but I won't stay too long on this. The, the big thing is coming up really soon is a Spring Core update. We're gonna go into more details for all of these. So I'll just, uh, I'll just touch on each one. Um, Semmering Barn is coming very soon as well as Long Island Commuter. Um, we'll talk more a bit about that. Um, we've, uh, we've also announced the DVBR218 from the TSG team. Um, as well as our partner releases uh, at Skyhook, they've shared more images and more information for the upcoming Cargo Line Volume 2 Aggregates Pack as well. Uh, River Games are still working on five Circle Line improvements too, uh, as well as their kind of commitments to adding the Levin branch um, and more kind of rail tour services for Five Circle. Um, kind of in the four to six months category, not many things have changed here. I believe the, uh, the 380 was added. Um, the, the, the Scott Rail Class 380 Loco, uh, as well as the uh, the Skyhook Class 158 Loco is there as well. And we've got the Expert BR 101 again from the TSG team. Um, and a couple of things in the release date to be confirmed. Uh, if you were keen and watching our roadmap update earlier, you may have noticed our Just Trains update was previously in the four to six months. We've just shifted that to the release date to be confirmed. Timelines haven't changed. It was probably a little apprehensive putting it into four to six months um, because it's quite early on in development. But uh, like I said, we'll, with this roadmap is a kind of a fluid updating thing. Uh, so, you know, we'll share more news when we're ready on that. Uh, and as well as that, I don't believe anything else has changed in that section. So we're kind of ready to start diving into the kind of meat of all the different bits. 
Uh, but before we begin, I do want to just give one quick mention to say that the roadmap is meant to be a bit of a mix of, hey, here's new content that's coming up, as well as new exciting releases that you can kind of read more details about. But also we dive into some work in progress bits, some development insights behind the scenes. So some elements of work in progress. So just appreciate the fact that not everything is a final rendition of what you can expect to see. And uh, we look forward to the feedback that you give us on those elements. Right. That's the intro. Matt, are you ready? No, oh, I'm all ready. Let's go for it. Let's do it. Uh, I know I, I can see a lot of you are excited in the chat. It's pronounced Lee Ven. I apologize profoundly. Um, my pronunciation has been awful on the stream, so I will attempt to get better. I promise. Um, let's start. So we're going to talk about Samaring Barn. Here we go. I have a first look that I'm going to play in the background. Uh, and I'm going to make sure the sound doesn't completely uh overwhelm us while we do this if you want to check this out in your own time it is on our channels so no worries about that uh catching a video uh but it's just rolling in the background and this Semmering barn is our Semmering kind of pass austrian alpine adventure an absolutely monumentous wonderful looking route um and it's just fantastic it's releasing on april 18th that's not very far from now at all in fact we have a pre-order and preview live stream happening on Thursday in just two days. So you've got a lot to look forward to with Semmering Barn bits. Matt, I, I, I didn't know if you wanted to jump in and give your insights for Semmering Barn. Semmering Barn is, I mean, we're going into more detail, <coughs> sorry, on Thursday, but the key thing to think about with Semmering Barn is um, it's, it's the world's first mountain railway. Um, and so you look in a kind of a very different experience to a lot of routes that you would see in Europe uh, and the UK. Um, so this is a, a big, steep climb up to Semmering and then a steep drop down so you've got lots of different uh driving skills if you haven't mastered using the electric brake in the uh in German and Austrian trains yet then uh, now's the time um so uh, yeah it's uh, it's good it's interesting scenery is beautiful um and then this one goes a little bit further than in train sim classic as you can see and it goes to Wiener Neustadt um uh, so it goes further than glugnitz which is where the previous route went to so it's um yeah it's a lot of fun lots of good stuff there very different um and uh, yeah lots of lots of austria and i uh, also kind of tick off that first look and show us the route map we have showed this a few times so i won't stay on this for too long and you can always pause the video if you're here on youtube as well um, but there you go, there's the route map. We've talked a little bit about how you get half of it is, is this mountainous trek and the other half is a bit more flatter, a bit more straighter, a bit of a racetrack. You also get a mix of experience there as well. Uh, but that's the old news. The new news is that we wanted to confirm that a, uh, we're adding a handful of the 1116 uh, services to Vorarlberg in a future update. So there was a little line on the roadmap there. Um, but just to say it on the stream as well, for those of you tuning in, um, you can look forward to that in a future update uh, along the way but uh that's every summer barn. i mean hell we've got a we've got a preview stream happening on august uh, august april 11th uh so just a couple days on thursday you can expect that usual streaming times and and that won't be me but that will be matt it'll be Jan, uh, and hopefully lucas as well so if you're looking forward to yep. that be sure to uh kind of put that in your calendars and we'll um we'll get a youtube kind of preview uh, event Lucas was of... so excited to join in that stream. He joined this stream thinking it was that stream earlier <laughs> yeah. on. So, you know, this is how hyped Lucas is about the route, as am I, to be fair. Uh, he broke my camera setup for the stream as well. So, uh, you know, I'll get <laughs> Lucas back for that. Um, right. But that's what we're going to talk a bit about Semmering. There are some screenshots on our roadmap article as well, so that you can check those out too. Uh, but we're going to move uh, to a different uh, release that we want to talk about. Uh, this is our unnamed US route. Um, so unfortunately, I'm just kidding. We're, we're going to talk about it. It's Long Island Railroad Commuter. We're, we're, we're finally able to announce this. So this is the uh, Long Island Railroad Commuter, New York to Long Beach, Hempstead and Hicksville. Now this is coming on April 30th. Uh, I have some images here. We, we have a whole bunch of uh, photos that are just going to kind of reel through. Um, I think there's also a kind of key art we've got in there as well. Um, but yes, we're finally able to talk about this, uh, and it's such a fantastic uh, kind of revisit of a route, but it will be a new add-on. Um, now, th this is kind of releasing on all standard platforms, as I mentioned, coming April 30th. Um, the pricing will be $39.99 or £29.99 or €35.99. If you are a player on Steam, you can get a 10% discount. And if you are an original Long Island Railroad owner for the original route in Trainsome World, you can get an additional 10% discount 
uh, on Steam for a total 20% discount if you have both of those criteria as well. Um, Game Pass players can also get 10% off on TSW4 add-ons with this included. So talking about buying and pre-order, uh, you can pre-order from April 23rd. And when you can expect to see this next, well, we're going to officially run a preview for the Long Island Commuter Railroad um, on April 25th. So it's kind of happening more towards the end of April, but don't worry, we'll keep the conversation coming. There's loads of images on this reel that we want to share. And uh, I mean, there's a new guard mode as well. I'm spoiling some of the things in the article if you haven't read, but we do have a dedicated uh, Long Island Railroad article to talk a lot more about this route. Um, but for now, Matt, tell us more. Oh, it's, it's so good to be able to finally say something. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a really interesting route. Um, I've seen some people asking about why Grand Central Madison and the third track are not included. It's because the period of the route hasn't changed from the original release, so it's still the same era. So that predates Grand Central Madison going in um, and the third track. So it's actually there's a, there was a shortish window, I think six months to a year, where the M9s and the M7s ran alongside each other. Although we do have the M3s factoring into the timetable as well, just for some extra variety. Um, and um, but yeah, being able to, um, so the, the whole route's been re-signaled from the ground up um, and um, the timetable is rich and full. It's incredibly busy. The, sort of the numbers of um, services you see on this route are astronomical. Um, and um, and then, you know, taking the drive, you take the take the right turn now. I says, for those of you who remember the route, if you're heading east from Jamaica, then there was the, the line that headed off right. Uh, which you'll now be able to take, which then takes you down uh, past um, Valley Stream and then on down to Long Beach. Um, so, and there's also the um, the uh, the other half of that um, that big junction there as well, the other side of the um, the the depot um, that's in there as well. So you've got the, all of that working because the timetable kind of both um, both lines get used by passenger services. Um, You've got new ATC and access um, systems in there. In fact, the entirety of the M7 and the M9 have been rescripted from scratch. Um, and you'll find new functionality in the trains. The screens are doing more interesting things. Sounds have been uh, reworked. Uh, you've got, well, I think, can't remember if it's one or both trains. Have, they've got quite iconic, lots of squeaking going on. I think it might be the M7, maybe both. I don't, can't remember now, but I remember that being a big thing in the beta community and um, they were sending us videos. And so we got some, we were able to get that in the train as well. So these things, they're quite squeaky trains. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's uh, really interesting to drive. Um, and uh, one of the other things I've seen is about um, night visuals. Um, and yeah, a lot of the route has had, a, in fact, all the route has had a major overhaul in terms of night visuals as well. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, this is, this is uh, awesome. This is a really fun route. And I've got a uh, route map here that we, we added onto our roadmap article a little, a little later in the day. So if you've not seen this, this is uh, hopefully something that is a work of art, really, because trying to get all the station names uh, around the, the shape of the route is uh, an interesting puzzle for our creative team. Um, but I do want to answer a couple oh, of questions. Other. Oh, One sorry, of the strengths please. of this route actually is the is the, is the fact that it, it's it's taken probably this it was the strongest network route in the game and it's made it you know it's added more network to it essentially because we we thought when we were looking at this when we wanted to, we wanted to do something with Long Island and we thought do we extend it east out of Hicksville towards say um, uh, Huntington. Uh, or do we talk Port Washington or something like that? And so well, Port Washington maybe, but actually what we wanted to do, uh, extending east out of Hicksville just makes the, lot, the, the long run longer and doesn't really give you more branch line stuff to do. Whereas um, extending down to Long Beach gave you more steps for more types of services. So your Fire Rockaway services and your um, Babylon services and um, East West Hempstead services. you got lots of stuff which is going at least some way down that line. You've got more services become more usable. So it's actually um, exceptionally, it, it's, it adds a tremendous amount of playable gameplay uh, and really builds on that central hub of Jamaica being there. So that was kind of why we thought Long Beach. Then you've also got the, the magnificent, it was in the screenshots there earlier on, the, the, the bridge over the river there down at Long Beach, um, which is superb uh, and factors into the mastery. Shh, hint, hint. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, some, there's some really cool stuff there. Um, well, the other thing that's worth mentioning actually is the uh, PIS systems on the platform, which were um, 
uh, let's just say they were UK-based. Uh, I think everyone's aware of that. They were UK PIS systems previously. There's now, I think, at least two unique PIS systems on this route now, um, which have been done based on that. There may be more. I can't remember. But it's at least two different ones. And there's a full-color displays, and there's an older-style display. Um, so there's that stuff in there. Um, and someone has said, has the M7 the M, uh, got PIS? It does indeed, So does, and as does the M9. So there's been an, a, a significant level up across the board. Yeah, and I mean, it, we've got a list on our Long Island commuter article and our roadmap, but just to summarize the key features, you've got a total of 57 miles of network, you've got the new Long Beach branch with 10 stations, the new abandoned Woodhaven station, the new M9, we've updated the M7 EMU as well, um, reworked the schedule with more services and more for the M3 loco add-on as well. There's the double duty guard scenario, um, reworked Sunnyside Yard, updated station areas with uh, new lighting, new textures and scenery changes as well to the water as well. Um, and the full TSW4 feature set. So I saw a couple of questions talking about Todd 4 that will be included. Um, volumetric fog, uh, rain effects, uh, as well as the dynamic weather from TSW3. Um, bring the cams back. There were still a couple other questions. So to confirm, this will be a new route separate to the original Long Island Railroad. Um, and in terms of discounts as well, I know there's um, there's a lot of players on console who are a little upset there's no discount there, and that's understandable. Um, certain platforms work in different ways, and we always try our best to try and give an equal discount and equal experience for the different platforms, but we can't always do that. Um, so that's about Long Island, we do have to talk a little bit about some unique gameplay features that will come into Long Island. And this is explained in detail on our article, and we'll be talking about this whenever it comes to uh, the Long Island Railroad commuter. Um, and that is that the safety systems will be enabled at all times. Uh, the brake charge, uh, I believe, Matt, is this for the M9 or if this is for all of the, um, the, the M7 and M9? M7 and M9, the brake charge will be automated as part of the startup procedure. Um, the, the circuit breakers won't be in the rear of the cab. The door controls have been altered. Uh, some of the signal IDs are now randomized and there won't be any CCTV cameras in the coaches. And we've been working with the licenses to kind of make sure that this is a route that we're both happy with, as well as is addresses safety um, issues as well for the route. But this is, this is something that's different. Safety systems being enabled at all times is not something that we've really done in previous things. This is something that you have the flexibility to control. Um, but to help you all learn this, to help you all be able to play the route uh, well, part of this release, we're gonna be sharing a Long Island, uh, a Long Island Railroad commuter manual. Um, and in that we'll have guides on how to use the ATS and the A6. Uh, the, the safety access. systems access uh, the safety systems in that as with the preview we will also have uh, a tutorial hopefully Matt you'll be uh, taking control of that to help show you how to to use these systems as well so I feel a PowerPoint in me coming along <laughs> we'll need a full guide um, but again there's a lot of information there's a lot of new screenshots and loads of awesome stuff but also worth catching up on those gameplay features that we've just talked about as well. So if you check out the description on our YouTube stream, um, then you will see a link to our Long Island uh, Railroad commuter announcement article, which has all the information there too. Um, so I just want to, there's a couple of other stats actually. One of the beta testers has done an in incredible job. I just want to big, big, big shout out to uh, beta tester. I don't want to name the beta tester. You might not want naming, but big shout out to a specific beta tester who has done so much work in uh, in testing this route in spe uh, specifically. Um, and he sent over some statistics, which I thought were really, really interesting to share. And we'll go into more detail when we do the launch stream, but uh, 39 stations in the game, um, 49 spawn points, 625 playable Long Islands services for a total of 1100 including ai um 25 complete different end-to-end -end services uh, or service types i should say um and then if you look at like the service quantity you're just looking at jamaica and between 7 a.m and 8 a.m there are 38 services 8 a.m to 9 a.m 36 services and then when you get back to rush hour again 5 p.m to 6 p.m 36 services you know, there's, um, there's, we'll pull out some more interesting stats. Eddie, Eddie he's, he's given us some really good information there. So there's, there's some, it's, there's, there's a lot here. This is, this is like legendary busy route. And uh, I mean, again, we're, we're happy we're able to talk about it and share it with you as well. Um, but again, like I said, loads of information, 
check out the articles links are in the description but we've got more things to talk about tonight um and i'm going to start it with the scott rail br class 380. now for those of you that follow us on socials you might have seen we were poking a bit of fun we were throwing a few teasers out um but if you were kind of keen uh, a keen eye on one of the teasers you would have noticed that we did throw a teaser for the class 380 and we can show you today a work in progress image of uh, the scott rail br class 380 as well um, this is the only image we have. Obviously, the cab as well is very work in progress. I don't believe there is an interior on the screenshot, but just to show you the exterior visuals um, and to answer a couple key questions, uh, something that we've talked about on the roadmap article, but the uh, the four ca the four car class 380 uh, has been modeled uh, as well as the three car will also be represented. So this will allow for three, four and six car services across um, the Cathcart Circle, uh, a new timetable for Cathcart Circle. Um, Matt, I don't know if there's any uh, bits you want to add with the 380. 380 is just a really interesting train it's, it's, where it's got that slanted front. And then when you see them coupling up together and you see the corridor connection sort of unslanting itself, it's really, it's just really quirky. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting there. I always used to enjoy driving the 380 in Train Sim Classic. So it's going to be good to get that in there and add some variety to, uh, to existing um, services. Yep, and uh, as a note, Rivet are uh, Rivet Games are there keen to explore opportunities for where the 380 can fit on Edinburgh Glasgow. There's nothing to confirm yet, but I did want to share that they wanted to say that from their teams. Uh, and generally, just more information about the 380 will be coming soon. Um, this is more of just an announcement and kind of just a nod to our April Fools teasers uh, as well. Um, if you did see uh, more of our April Fools teasers, you would have seen another thing. Uh, another um, a Dosto related thing with the expert DBBR101. Now this is from the TSG team. I do have some fancy images to show, uh, just a couple uh, here that will be rolling in the background. And this is something very new. And Matt, I'd like you to kind of dive into this uh, in a moment, but just to say it again, this is the expert DBBR101. And so what do we mean when we say expert? So uh, your normal, your average train sim world train is, is, is pretty detailed. Uh, it's got a, you know, an authentic simulation of what's going on. But there's actually a tremendous amount of functionality inside a train which is not modeled because it's not something you necessarily use all of the time or because it's actually too complicated. You know, you need, most players want to be able to get in and drive these things without needing the six month driving course um, and learning how to drive for real. Um, however, there are a group of players that want the real thing. And this BR101 Expert Edition is designed to be as close as possible to the real thing with, you know, as just about every switch I think works. If it's present, it does what it's supposed to do. There's detailed computer screens. You saw that screen on the on the screenshots there, which is about selecting is is actually how you choose PZB mode essentially, because you don't so much specifically choose PZB mode. You program the system and then it picks the PZB mode, as I understand it. Um, so you'll have to uh, figure out how to put that stuff in and then program the system up the way that you want to do it. It's it's really interesting. Uh, really super looking forward to seeing what people think about it. But yeah, this is uh, it's also the cab car to the same level, obviously, the, as as the uh, as the BR101. And it's really an opportunity to sort of take that, go to that study level, um, as um, as Dan eighty six says. Yeah, this is this is study level train. Um, so um, and it's yeah, seeing what sort of uh, a level of uh, what player reaction is to this level of complexity um, and and detail and authenticity uh, in in this side of things. It's uh, it takes an immense amount of work. The team have been working a long time uh, putting this stuff together. Um, so it's going to be uh, yeah, I'm really excited to, uh, to to for people players to uh, to see it and have a plump, have a have a go with it. It's going to be. Uh, it's a, a driver of a BR 101 was involved in making it just to give an idea of, you know, the level of, um, you know, the, the detail that's been going into it. And, and just to set expectations, this is, you know, as Matt said, it's it's we're trying to elevate the experience of the simulation. It's, it's meant to be uh, as realistic as it can be. There will be a higher price point. It does go into the more detail. But just to list off some of the features you can expect on the Expert 101, you have the Expert 101 with two cab variants, the MFD and the MFA. You have new refined physics for a more realistic simulation. Fully functional screens within the cab, including abilities like disabling specific traction motors. You have an extensive fault simulation if you want that enabled. You have an energy counter to measure how efficiently you drive. 
realistic door operations with the TBO and the SSTF door control systems, full digital displays, all screens and subscreens. Um, you have real train data input with the PZB and the LZB data, like Matt has mentioned. Um, sound improvements with new sound recordings, uh, upgrading some of the older capture from the original 101. Uh, you have a player enterable machine room. The engine room is modeled in. Uh, and finally, for those of you that are thinking, well, it may be a more intensive uh, experience. It will be a very study level loco, but there is an accessible driving mode as well. So, you know, if you just want all the cool new stuff, but maybe not quite pushing the boundaries on the simulation, you can also just have uh, a, a kind of typical experience for driving a normal TSW loco on the expert loco via a main menu setting. So amazing stuff. The TST team truly have done some wonderful work. Um, but as a, as, a, as a final note, this is the first expert tier loco we would have done for Train Some World. There are no others currently planned in development. So what we want to ask you is say, well, let us know your feedback. Tell us what you think. Um, just about the idea of it and when you eventually get your hands on it, obviously we'll be wanting your feedback on that too. Um, but it's just to kind of set the expectations as this is something new we're trying. Um, so we'd like to hear what you think. But yeah, I mean, we've seen so much excitement from sharing the roadmap earlier. Uh, and like I said, more details will come. This isn't everything. Uh, I hope that maybe in a, a roadmap or two from now, we can really start diving into uh, an interview with uh, the TSG team, an interview with telling all the specifics. You'll get the details, they're coming. Um, but for now, uh, that's what's been shared. And again, if you want some of that, you can always check out the articles we've um, posted earlier today. So fantastic stuff. We do have a quick mention. Um, there isn't any screenshots, there's not too much detail, but Just Trains, uh, they have uh, announced that they are working on a UK route. Um, and so, uh, like I said at the start, I think originally earlier in the day, we put this into four to six months category. We've now moved it to the release date to be confirmed. Again, no timelines have suddenly changed in the last couple hours. It's more just that the four to six months was maybe a little misleading. and We want to set the right expectations. So we'll keep you updated, but uh, I hope that uh, kind of gets you thinking. Um, maybe speculating a little bit about what it could be. Um, but yes, the Dress Chains team, obviously they've previously done uh, the recent Blackpool branches route as well. So I hope you're excited for that. Uh, in terms of some other bits as well, River Games with Five Circle Line, I did want to mention that uh, they have wanted to, they wanted to share forward um, the news for the improvements that they're currently working on. Uh, and they're working hard on the improvements already for the Five Circle Line. This includes 33 new services to the base layer, to and from Edin uh, Edinburgh, Waverley uh, to Cowan, God, the pronunciations are coming back, but Calden Cowden Beth. Beath. Cowden Beath. <laughs> Apologies, everyone. Um, there'll be a layer with six rail <sighs> tours, including the Flying Scotsman Loco, the M1, uh, MK1 and MK2 coaches, uh, and the Blackpool Large Logo, uh, Loco Class 47. Um, there's a layer with two rail tour services using the Black Jubilee with the MK1 coaches and many more uh, improvements as well based on community feedback. So thank you for the feedback. The Rivergate teams, uh, they've also shared their appreciation for having the community feedback and they've also committed to adding the Leven branch as well. So uh, we'll have to share more news when it comes, but they wanted to make sure that that was said uh, and the community are aware that they are working hard on those improvements for the five circle line. Uh, and kind of part of the same conversation, uh, Skyhook Games are still making good progress on the Class 158, the ScotRail BR Class 158. Um, but there is a list of art changes that they wanted to share. So if I, uh, if I scroll down on my, my roadmap document, there's, there's been so much to talk about that putting it all on my Word document just wouldn't have been enough. Um, but some of the art changes they've made for the, uh, the ScotRail 158 uh, include a, a range of exterior, in-cab and interior changes. And just to list a few uh, exterior ones, so there's a new snowplow air dam, new air conditioning roof vents, uh, they've remodeled the headlights on the exterior, new door buttons, a uh, new drop light window arrangement. In the cab, there's a new fan and wiring, uh, an additional phone, a new AWS plunger, a new reverser, uh, an additional screen and fuses. Uh, and interior wise, there's new seating, new luggage racks. Uh, they've remodeled uh, the disabled and toilet areas, um, new bike racks and a new PIS display. Um, so they wanted to share forward that there are new art changes to the loco. Um, but this is another one where, again, we're still waiting for more updates. We'll share more in upcoming roadmaps and upcoming announcements too. And uh, moving on, we have, still staying with Skyhook Games, the Cargo Line Volume 2. And we did have some screenshots for this, so I'll throw on uh, a little time lapse. I believe we only had a handful of images, but this is uh, the 
Cargo Line Volume 2 Aggregates Pack. Uh, they've spoken about it in an article previously, and we've talked a little bit about this from our February announcements. Uh, but what you're seeing here is the HOA Bogey Hopper Wagon. Um, there are two variants of this. They have several different weathering conditions. Um, but what you can expect from this pack is uh, three services to Midland Mainline and the Great Western Express routes. Um, three scenarios, sorry, apologies. Three scenarios to Midland Mainline and Great Western Express and two scenarios on Southeastern High Speed. You will also then get uh, a range of timetable services on Midland Mainline and Great Western Express. So if you want more details on this, they have a wonderful article talking about it. Uh, as you can see here, there are a few more screenshots we're sharing. Um, to kind of show you the progress that they've been making uh, and the hard work they've been doing on the uh, on the release and uh, we'll share more when we are closer to the time on that and coming back to our cameras we're almost wrapped up there's one more thing we wanted to mention and that is Luzerne Circe SBB licensor changes there's there's just a couple changes we wanted to add here and I think Matt I think you had a bit more details on these yeah so um it's feedback from the SBB uh, operator um, and again, it's mostly around safety concerns uh, and so forth. Uh, we're running into a number, uh, you know, an increasing number of these challenges because the sim is getting um, too realistic, perhaps for certain for, for safety reasons. So, uh, in this case, SBB have requested some changes, um, and uh, I think you've got the detail of those changes um, in in the document. So it's um, yeah, we're going to look at those um, we're getting the uh, rivet are getting those changes um, put in it's nothing too devastating um, and um, yeah so you can expect those changes at some point uh, to uh, arrive in a build near you yes uh, and just a just a note on the changes there'll be uh, some visual differences to the flashing of the yellow and red door release buttons uh, the pantograph can now be activated and deactivated through the master key and uh, the target speed indicator has been changed to yellow so just just those few notes um, but like matt said that will come in a, a future build, um, a future update, and we'll let you know. Um, and that kind of wraps up the content section. Quite a mouthful, quite a lot to take in. Um, appreciate there is a, a lot still that we have to talk about. Uh, and so we're going to be starting off with something coming with the uh, pre-order and preview of Summering Run on Thursday. That is our Spring Core update. So uh, we haven't got a full patch notes list to share yet. We'll share that on Thursday this week when the Spring Core update does go live. Um, and we'll talk more about the details of when you can expect to see that on different platforms. Um, but uh, this will be an update to obviously the core game as well as there'll be quite a few changes on the London Overground Suffragette line as well as Maintel Barn, Rosenheim and a few changes for the uh, UBB 4024 Loco as well um, and then other various routes uh, and a few other minor changes as well. Um, it's a good core update but part of that includes Formation Designer finally coming to consoles. <laughs> um, we know you've been excited uh, and this is a really big one uh, and I want to talk a little bit about our formation designer kind of phase plan um, and then Matt I, I can leave you to talk a bit more about the, the joys of formation designer and, and kind of reiterate kind of what players can expect from that um, but yes alongside the spring core update this Thursday console players can expect to get in and involved with formation designer and a part of our kind of four-step procedure that we've outlined the first part was let's get it out on pc platforms which we did which we did that back in february the second stage is happening this week which is getting its console platforms and bringing a range of additional improvements um, from that kind of first wave we saw the next future phases will be a phase three where we're trying to introduce creator club functionality and another set of additional improvements and finally phase four will just be let's get that beta tag out of here let's make it the full release um so we're still working our way through this but matt formation designer console players are going to get in what can they expect yeah it's 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 good to get a wider range in uh, players in particularly we're looking for uh, feedback on the interface using your controller that's going to be the big difference functionally it should be fine be it test the pc be it players have been having a good time with it and so this as you said there's some improvements coming in so for example you can reorder trains now there's a uh, quite a few bugs and, and crashes and so forth that have been resolved um so there's um there's a, a range of uh, functional and usable improvements as well as the robustness and so forth so get it across to console players just get your feedback by all means you know do get us that um you know your thoughts on on using it and um and then that will give us the um the confidence to say right it's time to get creators club enabled um and then once we're sure that's okay then we're all good to go so it's uh, it's a it's a big turning point and that doesn't mean it's the end of formation designer work 
um, we just want to we've sort of decided this is the this is the uh, the scope and feature set of this initial release and much like everything else in the game it, it may it will hopefully see future development as time goes on so it's not the end of work on future uh, on formation designer but it's kind of wrapping it up because we want to get it to everybody it's like we could we could develop it till kingdom come just leave it on pc until we're happy but actually it's really important to get it out to everybody to use and benefit for what's there finish off the broad, broad scope of functionality um but get some of these really important bug fixes in as well um and then we can see what you all would like us to do next on formation designer as well uh get your feedback on where you'd like it to go yeah uh, we'll be sharing details about all of the bug fixes that we've been able to introduce uh, alongside kind of the sprinkle update bits uh, as well. Um, as I know, Mantel Barn uh, Rosenheim stock should correctly be utilized. Uh, and there's a couple crash instances when adding duplicating locos or when adding custom formations. You know, the stuff that kind of happens in a beta that gets ironed out over time. Um, and as we approach that full release, this is the kind of thing that we're going to be doing, getting rid of the bugs, getting rid of the crashes and making it the full feature that we want it to be. Um, but we have uh, another set of improvements that we want to share with you today, and that will be uh, suspension improvements on the 4024. And we have a wonderful video that Matt, you recorded, and I'll leave you to do the commentary. Yeah, so this is the 4024 again. This is an interior and an exterior shot. And this is actually some, the actual, as well as seeing it on the 4024, this is actually a sort of a uh, another iteration on the actual implementation of the suspension system as well, because um, one of the feedback we've had from beta testers is that it's a bit too violent at the moment, really. Um, it kind of should be um, um, less less noticeable, and certainly less severe. Than it, than it has been. And it was actually quite a bit worse on the 4024 than, than say on the 66, which you saw in the last video. So um, the team have been taking a pass at, uh, at that. And um, sort of what we're seeing here is, uh, you'll notice it's, it's, it's a much more subtle um, effect on there. Um, and you'll see it again when we finish this run, you'll see it on the, on the outside as well. Now, what you'll see is that it's actually, as you go faster, so I'm doing about 50 kilometers an hour here, as you go faster, um, the effect dies down to where, you know, you're not, you don't see it an awful lot. If you drive slowly over these junctions, like at 10 kilometers an hour, you'll see the bounce much more, um, than if you're going faster. So just exactly how it should be. Um, so if you're doing, you know, hundred kilometers an hour over a junction, you really shouldn't feel it. It, you know, and you won't. Whereas the um, with uh, you know, and that's exactly how you'll you'll see this. So it's it works quite well. Um, so uh, actually, since this video has been taken, there's been another iteration on the suspension system as well. Uh, in that it wasn't quite reacting well. One of the things that again, one of the reasons we want to get this out and explored uh, more with the beta team is they found that it was behaving differently on some routes, even though the suspension feature is not a route specific feature. Crazily enough, we found it was behaving differently on on certain routes uh, and we've um, just today that problem has been traced and what was happening was that the bogies were lurching to it's like they were bouncing sideways instead of bouncing up and down it was weird um but that issue has now been uh, uh been found as well and um so i think we're we are approaching a happy point now um with uh, with where uh, with where things are at and um hopefully we can um we can now see this pushed out to a wider group of trains um, and uh, um, then we can get it out to everybody. So I think we're, we're coming around a corner now, we're literally coming around a corner um, and uh, we can, uh, uh, and you know, start to sort of be able to predict when we can start getting this out soon. So uh, I, I, part of me wishes it was coming out in the spring update, but it wasn't to be sadly. So um, <clears throat> yeah, apologies. <laughs> But that video we showed there, um, if you want to listen to that without us in the background, you know, we've got a roadmap stream to kind of carry forward. Uh, but in your own time, there's a link in our YouTube version of the roadmap stream. Just go to our description uh, and you can turn the sound well up and you can really hear those track joint noises. Really lovely sounds um, and really fits the uh, suspension improvements as well. Uh, so we do have a dedicated feedback thread on the forums for um, the, the, uh, the 4024 suspension improvements specifically those same with when we did with the class 66 um so uh please give us your feedback let us know what you think from watching a video from reviewing it um you know if you have cab ride experience of a 424 it also helps but also just let us know your thoughts anyway um and generally we're going to be sharing more progress with suspension in the coming months and talking more about when you can expect it very soon hopefully um so yeah you expect more information but we'll keep talking about it as we go 
Now, uh, there is a certain element of our roadmap article that I want to talk about, and uh, it's something I was talking about with our junior character artist, uh, animator, sorry, Oliver, um, who shared some of the, the, the changes and work that they were working on and the teams have made for updating passengers with the London Overground route. Um, and I'll just keep a brief mention to this, but if you look on the London Overground route, you will find a whole new range of different passengers uh, in different um, dioramas with different accessories. So you can find new character outfits. Uh, they'll have laptops, tablets, headphones, earphones, uh, a whole different range of phone varieties. Um, they'll have a different range of accessories with backpacks, glasses, and books. They'll be doing different things like watching films, sleeping, relaxing, learning, leaning. Um, I mean, I know that I personally usually just watch a, a movie on my phone like a kung fu panda one or two just on loop um that usually gets me through a good commute but you can also find passengers are couples on benches as well um workers moving boxes queues at ticket machines um and there's also some of the new seated animations on the 710 i believe we showed uh during the kind of preview stream for that as well and finally sandwiches i mean who doesn't love <laughs> a good meal deal when you're on a commuting journey so um, just fantastic work. Uh, if you are interested in this, there's a little bit more information and a bit of an interview with Oliver on our roadmap article, kind of in written form. Uh, but check it out. It's really awesome stuff. Uh, and there's a little bit of an image of some of the new diorama stuff there, too. Sure, uh, a big shout out, actually, to uh, Oliver and, um, uh, and Dom in the character team who have been um, really pushing things forward um, in, uh, and doing some really fun stuff, creating such extra variety. You know, one of the things that really, uh, that, that Oliver did, which really transformed the, uh, the Class 710 on London Overground was adding a load of extra seated animation uh, or seated positions for the, uh, for the passengers. Because when we first, you know, we, you know, we were looking at build builds of the 710 and seeing like the, um, these regimented, everyone sitting exactly the same. And it's just like, on normal seats, it's not a problem because they're kind of three people, two people, but this looks really poor. And, and all of us, I think I could fix that. And then shortly after that, you had all of this stuff and you had all the kids' hands in different positions and arms in different positions. It's like, okay, this this kind of detail that, that, that just sort of elevates things up a little bit. So yeah, big shout out to the character team for uh, and Oliver for, uh, for the uh, really, really great work there. Yep. Uh... Elsewhere around our kind of community corner section. Um, so we had a couple of videos shared from LNER. In fact, our player experience specialist Chris um, and Jess, who was uh, who is uh, an Azuma driver in real life. They teamed up and made a couple of really fun videos playing Train Swim World with real insights uh, from an, uh, an actual driver of the A01. Really fantastic video that was shared on the LNER YouTube channel. Really cool stuff. Uh, if you're interested, check it out. There's a couple two-parters on there. Uh, I believe they're maybe about 20 to 30 minutes each. Really good stuff. Um, but wanted to give them a shout out because those were, um, they came out kind of a little, a few weeks ago now, uh, if you haven't checked them out already. And a final thing I did want to note um, in our kind of community section is an interesting thing, a very fun thing, and that is Matt Peddleton's <laughs> headset giveaway. Uh, so if we quick switch back to the cam, what's that on? Uh, what's that on Matt's head? There you go. There, the Razor Kraken headset. That's not the pair you're going to be winning. Don't worry. You will get a new pair. You will get your own pair. Matt will sign uh, a pair of headsets for you. But we do have a giveaway. It was kind of part of our April Fools. A bit of fun. Um, we kind of teased something pink, and uh, who knows what it could be. And it was obviously Matt's headset. But at the end of the day. You can win a pair of these headsets. That I think they're about 70 great British pounds um, in value. I mean, they're a good headset at the end of the day. Uh, but you can look like Matt as seen on Railfan TV. So fantastic <laughs> stuff. Um, but yeah, we have a link. I wore the, I wore the crazy cat, Razor Crack and Kitty. So I've got two pairs of Razor Crack and Kitty, Kitty V2s at home. So uh, along with the original Crazy Cat, Razor Crack and Kitties. And I got I got these as well. So, you know, the Razor makes solid headsets. That's what I'm saying. And no, I'm not being paid to say that. <laughs> yeah, this is another sponsor stream. Um, but yeah, if, you know, if you want to give away to win some headsets, uh, check that out. There's a link in our roadmap stream. I'm not sure if I put a link in the uh, the description. I might not have. Apologies, that's my bad. Uh, but check out our roadmap article. There is a link to the Gleam giveaway in that um, too. And uh, there is one more thing I want to mention, but we're, we're going to shortly jump into some Q&A. So we've got some prepared questions we want to give some answers to, and then we'll open up a few live questions kind of before wrapping up for tonight. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed obviously hearing our rundown for the for the roadmap bits, uh, as well as what you can expect coming up in the uh, the future with Train Some World. There is something really cool that I learned about earlier this afternoon. Thank you, James Lewis, because he was sharing it in our team's chats. Uh, and I find this amazing. Did you know there was a, a solar eclipse yesterday across America? 
Well, probably. There's been loads of news about it. Did you know even more that you can see this in Train Sim World? And I've got a couple screenshots. These are in-game screenshots that James Lewis took this afternoon, hours before this stream. By setting the date to April 8th, which was yesterday, um, and there was a there was a note if you if you're at the Sherman Hill Summit at about 20 to 3 in the afternoon, um, you can see this, and that is absolutely amazing. And I just wanted to give it a shout out, just a couple of minutes on the stream. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of details. Again, if you April 8th, you have to spawn between about 2 to 4 p.m. Take a look at the sky and see what you see. Uh, again, Sherman Hill Summit is where James took these photos, but absolutely incredible. And I thought it was quite topical with the solar eclipse being just yesterday, but I didn't even know, I didn't know Unreal did that. It's just incredible. Um, but yes, we're going to move over to some questions that we've prepared. So uh, for those of you- I just who want are... to give a shout out, before you move on to that, Alex, I just want to give a shout out to the engineering team and the technical art team, because they made the environment system that allowed that to happen. We're not using Unreal's system for daytime. So that's actually in all of our engineering team that enabled a system that allowed that to work. So just credit where it's due. It's, it's uh, due. That, that's great work. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, I just, it's, it blows my mind and I feel like I know a little bit about how engines work, but no, I don't. So, um, so yeah, there you go. We, uh, we, we hope you've enjoyed our kind of rundown. We're gonna, we're gonna answer a few questions that the community have raised. Um, and then tomorrow I'll, I'll answer more on our kind of roadmap Q and a thread. So appreciate you all asking questions there. Um, just a quick note. If it's a question about is something, uh, is something that hasn't been announced going to be coming in the future? general answer is going to be well we'll talk about it when we're able to talk about stuff we'll announce stuff when we do announce stuff we won't just reveal it for fun here today um we've revealed a lot of stuff today so you know there's a lot of cool things that you can see uh, on our april roadmap um but uh let's go through some questions and if you're live in the chat and you have anything to answer we'll, we'll check those out we'll make note of them and then we'll come back to them um probably for another 10 or, or so minutes and then look to wrap up by about eight o'clock um so a, a couple i did see from our q a thread uh, one of them was any improvements to the camera mode. Uh, we don't have anything yet, um, so there's nothing really to announce there. And uh, someone asked a bit about more features for quick play, possibly filtering, you know, different service lengths, rules, uh, how that works. Nothing to announce uh, on this. We we haven't made any changes, and I don't think there's anything planned. So um, nothing nothing on that. I've, I've, I've taken notes of the feedback, though. There's some really clever ideas, uh, good ideas. So well, we're gonna, well, I've not got any plans to use that uh, feedback at the moment. Um, it's um, it's it's going through here, and we'll uh, we'll see what we can uh, we'll see what we can pull together at some point. And it's a good note that whenever you raise um, kind of like, has this issue been checked? You know, uh, has this been fixed? If our answer is sadly not, or that we're still reviewing it, um, it is useful to keep reminding us because we can always keep an eye on where the status is and make sure that it's, you know, if it's an issue that's prevalent with the community, we want to put focus on it. So it's a good thing and we're taking the feedback always. Um, but a good mention, Matt. Uh, so there is, um, someone's mentioned that while we fix some of the settings uh, on the HUD saving on consoles, uh, display current speed, the track monitor still don't save. That's um, to be reviewed. And if it's not fixed yet, then we'll try and get that in the next update. So we definitely want to make sure that all of the HUD settings are correctly retaining their status when you save. Um, and when you start Just to be clear, next update refers to the one after the one that's about to go out, because obviously the one that's about to go out is finished. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we've got um, the one coming out on Thursday this week is the spring core uh, and we're, we're kind of thinking we're aiming for more of a summer core um, kind of like towards the end of May for the next update, but we'll have to keep you updated on timelines as we go. Um, so uh, a question about the Cone arc and timetable. We've got nothing to report. Um, Matt, actually, you, you left a comment on this, I believe. So, yeah. So there's uh, there is a new build that's gone into the beta testers a little while back. Um, I think the I think Joe told me that the the number of services, including AI, and it's most a lot of it's AI because it's around the busy coal area, is over four thousand now. It's ridiculous. <laughs> So there's there's a lot of testing needing to be going on there. There's a lot of layers going on in there, and we need to see where it's at. But at the moment, Joe's actually been busy with other things. This is a uh, personal project Joe's been working on to update this timetable. So it's moved. It's made a fairly significant step forward, but it's um it's not um it's not got to a point of conclusion yet. So we'll give you more details um on on exactly the numbers and on what they do and what they mean uh, nearer the time. But um, yeah, I know when Joe read uh, Joe gave me the that, that quick outline stat, I was frankly blown away where he was finding space to put all these services on the roof. <laughs> and uh, I think there is a big 
there's a big thing in the chat happening right now and it's made me realize that after going from the expert 101 i think we moved past the 218 it's the other part it's the other part of what tsg have been working on how could i forget that's a uh, cardinal sin on a roadmap stream we didn't talk <laughs> about the 218 and it looks like i haven't we, we skipped past it because i didn't set up the images in my roadmap setup but uh, the DVBR218, uh, let's jump back and talk about that. That is something that the TSG team have been working on. Um, there are some really cool screenshots that, again, they're in our, they're not set up on my roadmap thing, so it would be a pain to try and do that now. Um, yeah, it would probably, be, probably mess up my stream setup. But there are some images for that uh, announcement in the roadmap article. I would recommend you check those out. They are work in progress. It shows an external view uh, of the 2R18 as well as a couple internal views. Um, but Matt, I don't know, do you have any details on the 218? I have probably less than I should have at this point. It's um, it, it's kind of come up as a uh, nearly finished um, product really quickly, actually. I mean, it's been in progress for a long time, but uh, um, it's I'm super excited for it. I mean, it's uh, be the first German diesel that's not a switcher, um, I think. Um, and it's an, such an iconic, I mean, one of my first... Um, HO scale models uh, on the model railway was a BR218. I think uh, a number of people can say that as well. Um, it's such a classic train. So yeah, it's good to have that in there. Um, I know uh, from what I recall, it's got N wagon coaches that it's coming with. Um, and um, uh, I can't remember where the scenario was and services are going to be. But um, yeah, it's, it's looking great. Um, so it's not much more to say at this point other than there'll be more details near it. Oh, there you go. Look. Yeah, there it is with its N wagon coach. See, I was right. It's almost like I know I distracted what I'm Matt about long sometimes. enough to, to get the images in our, <laughs> our stream set up. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's uh, yeah, with the with the uh, it's diesel diesel engines uh, uh, going on there as well. So it's um, yeah, it's a really interesting train. I'm really really happy that this one's coming in, and uh, I know TSG has uh, been working really hard on it. Yeah, and we've got a little bit of insight um, from James Lewis sharing and talking a bit about kind of the history of German diesels um, and the 218 itself. Um, again, read that up on our roadmap article. I can't believe we almost skipped that. So, you know, you know what, community in the chat, you did good today. Um, catching us up <laughs> on our bluff. Uh, and you know what, as a reward, you get to see the images in the uh, full screen. You don't get our little border taking away a little bit of your pixel space. So that's, uh, that's the treat you get. It may be minimal, but that's what we can offer you today. <laughs> Uh, but yes, like I said, if you want more information uh, about this, the best place to do is check out the roadmap article where no one will forget little things like this. Um, anyway, uh, yes, so that concludes a lot of the new content coming. There is so much stuff, so much stuff that it's so easy to forget. Um, but I won't give myself any more excuses. Back to the questions. Uh, I had uh, a couple more. I think some there was a, a question in the chat um, kind of relating about the 218 and it's when we can expect more information. So generally speaking, I think what we shared was some of those, those three work in progress images, which we just had on stream. Um, we'll share more information when we're a bit close to release following announcements um, for services and for layers. Um, again, it's, it's, it's a little early in the process for us to start talking about that more in detail, but you can expect that coming up in future announcements um, as well. And there was a mention about PC editor improvements. So uh, let's like, we've previously mentioned a little bit about um, the timeline for improvements. Um, and, you know, we're kind of targeting more later in the summer. Uh, the team are currently trying to see where they can support the community the most. Uh, I'll be honest, it's been difficult. We wanted to get tutorials. There was uh, the aspiration to make guides and tutorials where we can. Um, I think these were very much mentioned as like, a, like we'll hopefully get some quick tutorials together, but it's been hard because the team have been really hard at work. Um, making priority for those videos has been a little bit difficult. Um, but what I will say is that the, the community support and resources are still the best protocol. Uh, until we're able to help uh, support the community anymore, I would highly recommend checking out the PC editor forums um, uh, as well as the different resources that the community have pulled together. There's just fantastic stuff. Uh, and right now, we really want to support the community more. We understand there's a few key issues. Um, they haven't gone away. We know they haven't left our mind. We are committed to the PC editor, um, so the changes will come. But that will We're be... actually investigating what we can do at the moment to see if we can't bring in um, some of the stuff that we want to get done and get it done sooner than we originally had planned. So we're looking at options for that at the moment. No actual tangible change on that at the minute, but um, just to reinforce that it's not left our minds, we are trying to see what we can do to uh, to accelerate things a bit. 
But yeah, we appreciate there's a lot of community interest in the editor. There's a lot of people doing amazing things with the editor. Um, uh, every every now and then in the roadmap, we feature some of these things from the community, just fantastic projects. Um, and we love seeing the progression they're making uh, on the various projects they're working on uh, and, and you all are making. Um, but yes, right now we'll, we'll have to kind of get back to you when we are able to provide more support or able to provide information about um, improvements. Uh, there's a mention here about uh, where's JD? Is he doing okay? This comes up uh, quite often now. JD's doing fine. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's doing wonderful. Um, he, he he's listen. hiding there in the background. <laughs> he's, he's somewhere back. <laughs> he's, 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 <laughs> Uh, but no, he's, he's doing fine. He doesn't tend to host the roadmap streams anymore, um, but you might see him pop up now and then. Uh, and if you're active in our community forum spaces, you'll see his name up here. He, he, he usually beats me to certain comments, um, but he is doing fine. Um, okay, Matt, have you got any questions that you've written down? I've still got a couple on my list, but I did want to give you a chance. If you no, I didn't actually write any other questions down. Uh, I should have been doing that, shouldn't I? But no, I didn't. Um, oh, someone's talking about the AI PAS on um, SEHS. It came up again today, um, actually. Um, so I'm trying to get that wrapped into the uh, into the next patch. Um, so um, yeah, it's on my mind. I get people DMing me on the forums approximately once a day about it. So it's it needs done. Uh, we got to mention um, on our, uh, on kind of staying on our list of stuff that we 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 had from our Q and A thread uh, about when we're we getting um, fixes for passengers on the overground routes, um, and some improvements are coming. Uh, in fact, so this this Thursday is our kind of core update. Um, we we've already talked about some of the changes that are coming on the roadmap, but that's kind of locked in now. We you know we know what's coming in that patch alongside formation design are coming to consoles. The next core update, we're taking a look at some of the recent UK routes um, uh, and trying to get some improvements on there. Uh, players have suggested improvements uh, and, and kind of brought up improvements for the Azuma, the A01, for example, and uh, this is what we're targeting for. So, you know, we'll share more news. Obviously, we don't want to commit to much because we want to make sure that we're set on our list of improvements that are delivered after this kind of core update, but that's what we're looking at. Um, so again, keep your feedback coming and uh, we appreciate it greatly. Um, there was a, a general mention for, is there news for other ongoing projects? So there was a lot of different things mentioned, but generally it was anything that wasn't mentioned on the roadmap. Is it, is it fine? Where's it gone? You haven't said anything. Uh, so this could be the Alan Thompson sim. This could be the 40, uh, the 420 to Darmy line, uh, the 104 Peak Forest. Um, so generally speaking, there hasn't been any updates. Uh, when we have a roadmap, not everything will get listed in the roadmap. Things will be ticking along in the background and kind of different projects are at different stages all the time. Um, for example, I mean, we, we saw just today, you got two different developments from the TSG team. You've got the Expert 101 and the BR, uh, the, the DBBR 218, as much as we tried to skip over it. Um, but they're still, you know, the different projects with different timelines. Um, so it's worth probably saying that, you know, just because we go from maybe the April to the May roadmap next month, um, the, the May roadmap next month, uh, if there isn't any update from some of the things we've talked about in this roadmap, it doesn't mean they've gone anywhere. It just means that, you know, we may, we may need another roadmap for different information to come through. We may have different announcement articles prepared in the kind of middling time between two roadmaps. So, um, just, just know that different projects are in different stages and we'll let you know when, when, when news comes about as we usually do through general announcement channels, um, and update kind of areas as well. Okay. That's what I had on my list. Um, Again, appreciate there's a lot of questions. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look through some of the live ones uh, and then we'll look to wrap up uh, in a short amount of time. We do appreciate the questions coming through though. There is a thread on the forums with many questions that I will aim to look at and kind of close up tomorrow morning. Um, but let's take a look in the chat. What have we got? There was a question about the 218 on uh, Nidatal Barn. I believe we're still looking to confirm, again, like the layers services. Um, so nothing to confirm, yeah, yes or no, unsure. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit closer to the time. Um, the question about will there be any new new countries? That that's definitely one where it's like, well, we just can't talk about that. We, you know, there are plans that we have, but we won't be announcing any more uh, today. So you'll just have to hang on. Uh, fingers crossed. What's with the 3R385 sound fix? Still waiting on recording trip with Scott Rao Mario. It's not off the cards yet, it's, uh, but it's still pending actually getting a trip organized, which is uh, taking rather longer than we'd hoped. Uh, 710 on Bakerloo. The, we did we did give an update on this and that we, our teams were looking at this last time. Um, I don't believe there's been, if there's, has there been any update on, 
and I've not seen any update from the team about that one. I know that they are dead keen to get it finished and, and released. So um, I will go and uh, talk to them tomorrow and find out where they got to with it. Um, the eBula on the 101, uh, I'm guessing this is the expert 101. Uh, do you know anything about that, Matt? I don't, and Lucas isn't around for me to ask. Um, so um, we'll give you more updates on that nearer the time. Uh, only me saying about the missing pantographs on the Talent 2 in Kolonakan. I thought I'd fixed that. Can you send me details on what you're seeing uh, on that only me? And then I will go and see if the fix just hasn't made it out yet or whether or not there's a different issue uh, that needs to be looked at. So, because I... Uh, have I lost Matt? Have I lost myself? Still some um, some kinks to iron out with the process um, and uh, and such, but uh, we're definitely uh, moving forward and uh, getting more and more people. There's a lot of third parties that uh, be the third party team are working on. Sorry, Matt, just uh, uh, just lost Matt. We might have, we might have paused that. I, I hope I was it wasn't my connection. Um, but I think my back. Yeah, I hope you're back. I hope everyone can still hear us all right. <laughs> we might have lost you. Uh, we're keeping an eye on the chat. Well, my Discord is is being terrible. Uh, what did you What did you hear up to? Uh, maybe maybe repeat the comment. I think we kind of lost most of the middle part. Right. Okay. So um, the first the, the Kolnakan was um, as far as I'm aware the talent to on on, on Kolnakan I fixed. So if um, you're still seeing a problem, let me know, and then I'll go and check the, um, the the change lists. Maybe the patch hasn't actually made it out yet. So, and if that's the case, then I'll I'll go and sort out when that can come out. Um, and I can't remember anything else I said. So it can't have been very interesting. We'll come back to it if we need to. Uh, I've seen a couple <laughs> um, a couple mentions of uh, London Overground Supper Jet Line crashing um, Barking Riverside. I believe there may be a fix in the core update coming on Thursday. I may be wrong. If I am wrong, then we at least have the next core update, which will look at recent UK routes. Um, but if it's crashing, it will probably be something we look at sooner rather than later. Um, so like I said, I believe there may be a, a fix for that. Otherwise, we'll be looking at it closely. Um, Oh, it's about third parties. Yeah, thanks, Derek. So yeah, but we, we are onboarding. Um, we've got a lot of um, uh, third parties that the team are talking to um, that are getting started with projects. Uh, the process is um, are always going to be something that we we iterate on and improve. Um, and uh, but yeah, the team working really hard. Big shout out to um, Stephen Ryan and the uh, third party team for uh, the hard work they're doing, and uh, and they're also to the third parties because they're doing some absolutely amazing things. Fantastic. Okay, uh, it's just past eight o'clock, so I'm going to call it there on time. Don't worry, if you have a question and we haven't answered it, I don't want it to feel like, you know, you're throwing your questions out. It's potluck whether we get it answered or not. If you have time, please go over to our roadmap Q&A form thread. What I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll quickly go over there now and throw a link to that in the chat. Um, that will stay open until tomorrow morning. So, you know, if you have a question that you want answering, get that in now so you don't forget in the morning. Uh, Oh, fantastic. There you go. Thank you uh, to the mods. And as a general call out, thank you to the mods who do a fantastic work helping uh, run our streams as well. Um, but yes, uh, Big shout out. Thank that, you. that link I've just put in there. So throw your questions in there. Um, I'll come back to that tomorrow morning, find out the information I can, um, whether uh, I'll be able to provide more information or not. Um, hear back from me tomorrow morning and I'll, I'll let you know. But that's it. Thank you very much. That's been the April Roadmap 2024 update. There's been loads of new news that we've been ready to talk about for a while and we're finally able to share with you. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a fantastic one. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And Matt, you've been a wonderful host as usual. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that'll do us for tonight. Uh, good night, everyone. It's been wonderful. Hope you have a good evening. And uh, like I said, if you were able to just jump into the, the April 8th setup, uh, uh, again, Sherman Hill, uh, just see if you can see an eclipse. I think that's pretty cool. I wasn't able to see it because it was cloudy and we're in the UK, um, but that's really cool. So I'll leave you on that. Carl Andrews is saying he's seen it on uh, Cane Creek as well. So try it on different routes, folks, and uh, and uh, maybe share some of your favorite um, eclipse screenshots on the forums. If we get some, I would love to put them on social. So we, we'll give you a shout out as well. So Cane Creek, uh, again, maybe 2 to 4 p.m. You'll have to maybe test the times, but I'd start there. Otherwise, have a good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.